Good day, everyone. This is Daryl McCutcheon, co-CEO of the Networkers Lounge, bringing you another incredible video offering interview with leaders that I have been tangible to that are making a difference in the world as we know it today. So today I have Mr. Harold Crawford, who is an Indiana-based resident, doing some phenomenal things here in this state, in this community as well as his outreach abroad. Mr. Crawford and I have had the pleasure of knowing each other for quite some time. He is a 2011 graduate of the Leadership Academy of Madison County. He has also has 30 years of experience in human services work. He is currently the academic program coordinator for the Madison County Urban League. And he's also a believer. So I know that that being said, that this man's efforts are as they should be. They are integrous. They are sincere. He does have a passion for what he does, and he has a compassion for other individuals and the outcome of what he shares with them. So I want to take a moment here and introduce Mr. Harold Crawford. Harold, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Daryl. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm having a good day here, and uh, I just simply want to thank you for your time, uh, sharing a few moments out of your day. I know you're a busy man and doing some great things, so I simply want to thank you for your time today, man, just to um, share this time with the audience, with the viewing audience. I've got just a few yeah. questions here for you, Mr. Crawford, and um, I know that I didn't prepare you for the questions, and I normally don't do that because I... Um, I want the responses to be very impromptu, and I think that they're genuine. Um, it shows who you really, really are. So I apologize for not preparing you, but I'm sure that you will uh, take upon this task, man, and, and handle it like a charm. The first the question, what would you say now? I'll do the best I can. I'm sure that you will, man. So listen, the first thing that I would like to ask you is, is simply this. Who is Harold Crawford? Uh Harold Crawford is a person who believes he is striving to be and do that that God has called him to be and, and what God has called him to do. Okay, do you want to continue a little bit with that? And I might ask you to speak up just a little bit. Well, that to me sums up who I am in life because for me, Life is about striving to live out that that you believe God has called you to and doing the best you can at that because that's what God has called you to. And Harold Crawford, that's who he is, or that's who he sees himself to be, a person striving to live out that that God has called him to. So we're talking about a purpose of life. Purpose, yes. I ha that, that purpose um, for me has been human service work. I call it the ministry of human service work because that's what I have done for the past 30 years. And when I look back in my life, even when I was in uh, grade school, elementary school, it seems that it was in my heart to always draw to the persons who didn't seem to fit into the, the normal flow of, of uh of community and of people. See, like I always was working to build up the underdog, so to speak. And when I moved into my adult life and I accepted the call of God in my life, I found my that passion that I felt back in elementary school, the passion for people, that passion reignited once I accepted God in my life and from that reigniting of that passion, I spent the last 30 years working in human service work. I've worked in um, shelter care facilities. I've worked in independent living skill facilities. I worked for foster care adoption agencies. And for the t past 10 years or so, I've worked in a specialized um, therapeutic setting using a particular model called the stress model. And that setting involved working with level four plus kids as they're designated by the, the um, 
social service system. These are kids who really have severe behaviors, and this uh, therapist called Brian Post developed a model for working with these kids, and that basic premise of that model is decrease their stress and diminish their behavior. And after working with that model for about three years, I, well, after learning the model for about two months, I became a student of the model because I was impressed with the results that I saw from the model. So human service work, the Ministry of Human Service work is what I've done for the past 30 years, and, and it really was enhanced by the past 10 years working with this licensed clinical social worker. Awesome. So in the work that you do, is it... Um would you say it is teaching, now let's say, and let's say perspective to teaching or educating, uh, one being similar to the other, where do you find the, the value of what you do? Is it a teaching ministry? Is it an educating ministry? And how practical is what you do in relationship to you having the knowledge as well as helping individuals process that knowledge? Well, teaching, educating, and I would have to add experiencing. Experiencing is the key to the work I've been doing the last 10 years, and at this point in my life, experience is the key to who we are as human beings. And what I mean by that is, Take, for example, one of the young persons that we worked with in, in uh, this therapeutic group home, this young person had an explosive personality, extremely explosive personality. And it was designated that this young person would, be, would not be able to live in community with the family or or, or definitely not on, 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 on their own. But after bringing this person into the home and practicing the stress model with this person, which is experience, this person is now living in their own apartment in community when this person was diagnosed as with some type of label that said, she would not be able to live in community by herself or with the family. So it's experience. The experience came in when, well, the challenge for me in doing this work came in when we opened the door to allow this person, when she first came to the house, it was a young lady, she first came to the house, and we opened the door, and she immediately looked at us <laughs> and started cursing. <laughs> now, now, keep in mind, I'm from the background where if you look like you wanted to say something back, you would get slapped in the mouth or knocked down. You, you know how, how old school, how, how, how old school, how we were raised? You couldn't even look like you wanted to say anything back to an adult. Now, here I am standing at this door, meeting this young person for the first time, and getting cussed out. That went against everything in me because I was raised a certain way. But the stress model says in order for people to change, they must have different experiences. So here I am having to having to confront myself based on how I was raised and in that confrontation I had to experience change, a change away from what I was taught to doing things a different way for the purpose of helping this young person grow. And not only that young person but all the other young people that came through the home too. So really what I do is teaching education but it's really, I think, more about experience. Mm -hmm. The experience of change, not so much expecting someone else to change, <laughs> but me changing. I have to change for the good of others, for the good of others. And a scripture comes to mind 
as I say that, and that scripture is, I think the Apostle Paul said it, I become all things to all men so that I might win a few. See, that to me, that, that's deep because he said, I will become something other than who I think I am. Not just for the sake of becoming something other than who I think I am, but I'm becoming something other than who I think I am or who I have been raised to be for the sake of helping somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I so should go right ahead. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. It, it's experience. It's, it's, it's changing. And that's something that's difficult for human beings to do. And that's change, especially change for the sake of somebody else. Sure. And you know that's what you're doing. You know you are intentionally striving to become or be a certain way because being that way is going to help somebody. Okay. And I think, you know, to me, that's what the message of Jesus was about. Jesus in heaven, not having to be a human, but allowing himself to become something other than what he was, for who? Us. So the stress model kind of lines up to me with who I am or who I am striving to be in Christ. All right. And it's about experience. Yes. You know, I, 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 people probably wonder why, well, not wonder why, you know, when I host these interviews and I, you know, I can be selective about whom I share this time and space with. And I'm not always favoring the people that have had success in business um, because I know that that road to success is going to bear its challenges and in all that we that I engage in from a marketing standpoint or from a business standpoint the variable that is undeniable in that equation is people you know you're interacting with people you're attempting to help people. You're attempting to coach or mentor or to train people and help them get to that point of what might be success. Now, success doesn't necessarily always mean financial success. Um, even though a lot of people will move into marketing arenas and business arenas for financial success and for financial rewards. But I find out more every day that the people factor, the, the people factor, who people are and what they are and what they're aspiring to be, it makes a difference in which way they go and where they're going to end up. Um, I know that and I see that on a daily basis. You know, people offer a lot of things in the marketing and the business arena that say will position a person for success. But I say again, you need to know who that person is. So this is why I feel the importance to embrace relationship building, creating alliances. And when you're building relationships, that means that you're taking the time to understand that individual and know how to effectively help them. Human services, behavioral science of which you engage in and you are an expert in you know, you think about what a person carries from as early on in life as their childhood. Some things that may have been inbred in them or have impacted them that they've carried with them through life. And then all of a sudden they reach the point of adulthood and then they say, I want to be successful. I want to do this. I want to be like that person. You know, is that possible? Is that possible? And if it is possible, what do you need to do within yourself to get to that point? So this is the reason why I take the time out to interview a Harold Crawford of the world, because you understand that. So thank you so much for sharing it. What um, my next question to be to you would be simply this. What do you offer to anyone that would have the opportunity to connect with you? What is it that Harold Crawford shares that will help empower someone in any direction that they're going in life, young or old, young or adult? I won't say old. I say young or adult. 
I think that into being and who God is developing, develop, developing me into being, I would have to say openness. Openness to who you are and where you are in life. And not just openness. It's an openness that people can experience. You can feel the experience of the openness, openness that I'm talking about. If you are in a position to receive that openness, we are, you know, scripture, uh, one of the Psalms says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And at 55 years, I will not be 55 in August, I am finding that to be so, so true. Because as we interact with each other, at the, at the chemical level of who we are, there is a hormone called oxytocin. And based on the book by uh, Susan Konchinsky, or Konchinska, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, anytime we are, in, we are interacting with each other, there is this hormone that is released called oxytocin. And if each person or the people we're interact, interacting with has a healthy oxytocin release, then you feel comfortable in these people's presence. But if the person does not have an oxytocin release, a healthy oxytocin release, then you feel somewhat uncomfortable. Hmm. Now this is science. Oxytocin is the hormone that, that uh, that is really generated between mothers and babies when they're breastfeeding. But we all have this release, and based on what the book says, it is a learned release. Hmm. So when I say openness, I'm not talking about an openness of just being open to who hear who you are and accept you where you are, but also an openness that is experienced in a positive way for the purpose of, of adding to who you are as an individual and encouraging and promoting and, and lifting you up to, to, to be the person that God has called you to be or to relieve you from some of the anxiety and stress in life that you experience. Oh man, I know how deep the well goes with you and your understanding and in your wisdom and your experience. And I know that that well is very, very deep. And this Thank is you. one of the reasons that I want to take the opportunity to introduce you because I know the value in you. So I thank you for that. What kind of, you know, you, you've, um, you've done some great things in 2011. You've done some things prior to that that I wasn't privy to know about or share. Um, now we're into 2012. What can we expect of Harold Crawford in 2012 and beyond? You know, Harold Crawford has come to the second phase of the career in his life, I think. First phase, I've been in direct care, hands-on experience, working with people in the trenches, so to speak. Uh, like I said, I've named the different places I've worked in, and generally people who go to come to those kind of places are young people who have been displaced from home, who are stressed out and really uncertain about life, many times feeling unloved, and I've worked in this venue for, for the past 30 years. At this point in my life, I see God taking me to a place to share with others who are working with people who are, who have, who are going through what I experienced and going through during my first 30 years of, of uh, human service work. I feel God has placed some things in me that can help some people do a better job or maybe encourage some people to hang in there and keep going because these young people and adults in stressed out situations, they need a support system. And I believe at this point I can help people to understand the things that can help them be a better support system. 
Right now I'm working with the Anderson Responsible Fathers and Families Program and through that program I see that program growing because it encompasses to me what life has been about. Anderson Fathers and Families is about family and we put the emphasis on fathers because based on the last research I saw no less than 24 million children in America are growing up with that without involved fathers. And the data says that if ch children grow up without involved fathers, they are much more likely to be poor themselves when they get grown. They are much more likely to end up in prison. They are much more likely to use drugs or be abused at earlier ages. So that father's involvement is extremely important. But we don't say fathers because if father is responsible for being involved with his children, that's impacting family. So at this point in my life, I think through the Father's Family Program, God can use me to help a lot of people develop closer, more involved relationships with their kids, which takes me back to what I've been doing for 30 years, improving kids' lives, but improving it now through fathers and, and families, through fathers and mothers being involved in a, in, a, in a deeper relational way with their children. I was in a meeting not long ago, and I was, well, I was teaching a parenting class, and somebody said, he was talking about how our family loved us growing up. He said, I know my family loved me when I was growing up. And so I asked the question, did you feel love? And at that question, young man just kind of stopped and looked. There's a difference in knowing someone loves you and feeling that love from someone. I am today convinced that my caregivers loved me growing up, but I can personally say I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel it. And that's one of the things I'm convinced today is missing in relationships, especially between fathers and children, fathers and mothers, and many husbands and wives. Feeling love. We, we don't really know how to make each other feel love. Many people don't. And with the background I've come from, I understand that some. Because if you were not raised in a nurturing, caring environment where you feel love, then you really don't know what love feels like. Feeling love is foreign to you. So, you know, Brother Crawford, I, I, I truly, truly appreciate, man, everything that you have shared here today. I, I understand the value of what you have shared here today. And I hope that someone will also receive the value of what you've shared here today. What I would like to do is give you the opportunity to provide a contact number or a contact email address, let's say a contact email address, whereby someone could contact you if they would like to connect with you. Would you do that at this time? Um, yes, I can be contacted at mulima42 at yahoo.com. M-U-L-I-M-A 42 at yahoo.com. All right. Thank you, my brother. This is Daryl McCutcheon, co-CEO of the Networkers Lounge. Gosh, Brother Crawford, thank you so very, very much, man, for your time today and your sharing. I embrace you. I embrace your success and all that you do. And I wish you well. God bless you, man. Any closing thank comments you. before we go? Any closing statement before we go? Oh, um... I just want to say thank you for having me. I'm impressed with the work you do, and 
I believe God still has some great things in store for us to help improve people's lives. And you, from a business standpoint, me, from a human service standpoint, which is in my heart to do, and I just look forward to what God has in store. Awesome. Brother Crawford, thank you so much, man. God bless. Until next time. Thank you. All right.